Hi everyone, welcome back to Nasidyanka, the channel where I talk about Bulgarian history, uh, culture and faith. This is part 9 from episode 15 where I begin sharing with you the 17,000 years of Bulgarian history as per Ivan Trenev's research and exhibition. Uh, the uh, resources as usual I'm including in the comments um, section, the section below where you can click and see um, where that's coming from. Um, for those of you who are following me, you know that I am translating these articles from the Bulgarian language and I'm not making up anything uh, of my own. I'm making it available to the English-speaking world. So let's begin today with episode 15, part 9. This is going to be about Han Attila, or also Khan, as you guys would say in the English language. So you will learn of who Khan Attila the Bulgarian actually was, and uh, you will also hear some interesting facts about the appearance of the cross for the first time in the first century. So Bulgarian power reached its peak during the reign of the legendary Bulgarian leader called Khan Attila. He ruled from 434 through 453 AD. He was from the Dulo family, and uh, if you guys have watched my previous episodes, you uh, may have, you will already have heard that the Dulo family is one of the many Bulgarian uh, families, um, kind of like branches of Bulgarians. He subjugated the territory from France to China. He brought Constantinople and Rome to their knees, basically. So he remains in history with the nickname of the Scourge of God. The high and great goal of Attila the Bulgarian, he's also called the Bulgarian because he was a Bulgarian, <laughs> was to destroy the slave-owing Roman Empire, which at the time was a hotbed of moral corruption and debauchery. It was also to free the enslaved people and to create a powerful Bulgarian Empire from Europe and Asia that would... Um, would have been built on the sound and high moral principles of the ancient Bulgarians. Um, I should have said from Europe through Asia. So his goal was also to build a new world state with a just social and, and, and state structure. Um, there are some records, um, especially uh, from a historian, Murad Aji, who wrote that Pope Leo I, in the year of 452 AD, kneeled before Attila, the ruler of the Bulgarians, begging him to spare Rome. And um, in the entire history, by the way, of the Roman Catholic Church, no other pope is said to have ever knelt before anyone. Um, so... What saved him was that the Pope agreed to use the Tangrian cross. And if you guys, again, have watched my previous episodes, such as episode 18 and other previous earlier episodes in my channel, you would have, you would learn, you would have learned, you can still watch them and learn, um, that uh, the Bulgarian, uh, ancient Bulgarians uh, and Thracians and their supreme monotheistic god actually was called Tangra. You can learn more details um, there. So the cross symbol of Christianity in this way in the 5th century AD appeared for the first time um, in Christianity. So in the early years of Christianity, the cross was not used as a symbol. The early Christians used the fish and the lamb, um, as many um, people will say in the West. But actually now we have evidence that the cross was used and it used to belong to the Tangrian Bulgarians um, who also descend from Noah, and this is something I'll cover in the future. So let me show you a few pictures here of Han Attila. Okay, so you guys just saw a few pictures here. Of course, I did not make them. I am including the sources where I'm using them from. But this is Khan Attila the Bulgarian, as well as uh, his map, the um, territories that he uh, ruled. 
Um, here's a little note that I thought I would include. Um, I have mentioned in the past, you know, Bulgaria actually is a combination between the two words, Bulg and Aria, Aria standing for light. Uh, but if you also think about Hungary, that's the same thing, Ungaria, Hung Aria. Uh, they're actually uh, relatives of Bulga descending from Bulgarians. Bav Aria, Bavaria, same thing. So um, at this point, we're going to talk a little bit about the Bulgarian Huns. Uh, so they, the Bulgarian Huns, were large, blonde, light-skinned people with a sedentary lifestyle and massive houses. Attila's dwelling had two towers. The Huns were clothed with embroidery. Um, so their clothing, they wore clothing with embroideries, just like the ancient Bulgarians um, in the Balkans. A little note again, uh, episode 17 in, in my channel talks a little more about the Bulgarian traditional clothing and in the future I will try to add more there as time allows. So Attila was large with brown hair and blue eyes, uh, which was typical of the Bulgarian Alans. Again, just one of the many groups of people from the Bulgarians. Um, in addition to his native Bulgarian language, he also knew Latin language. So he spent his childhood and adolescence in Rome, where he got acquainted with the rules of the slave-owing Roman state, and he understood that he had to re reform himself according to the Bulgarian model. Attila was distinguished by modesty among the flamboyant Romans. Attila also united the people around him not by force nor by sword, but by his personal example and his belief in freedom. And so with this I'm actually going to end here. This is a short episode acquainting you guys with Han Attila as Ivan Trenev has researched him more in depth. Next time we will continue, um, as a matter of fact, we will talk a little bit about Han Tervel, the savior of Europe and Christianity, whom I have covered also in one of my first episodes. But uh, the reason that some of these are repeating here is simply because I am sharing with you what Ivan Trenev has um, shared and uh, publicized in, the, uh, in, in his uh, research. Um, and I thought that that would be curious. Some things overlap and then some other things don't. <laughs> so I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you have a great rest of the day and uh, I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.